Mm-hmm. Florence Chadwick, who was the first woman to sweep, uh, to swim the English Channel in both directions. We are told that she set record around the world for great feats of distance swimming. At the age of 34, her goal was to become the first woman to swim from Catalina Island to the California coast. We are told on the 4th of July in 1952, in freezing cold and intense fog, she set out to accomplish this daring task. For 16 hours, she swam in the fog. She couldn't see any other thing apart the fog. In fact, the, the, the people that were escorting her, she couldn't see them. And after struggling and struggling for a long time, in fact, just about half a mile to the shore, she got tired. And she said, well, I can't go further. I can't see the shore. And she requested that they should, she should be put out of the water, which eventually, you know, um, they did. She couldn't finish. But after two months, she came back. And when she came back this time, she came back with a clear vision. She came back with the end in her mind. And we are told that with that kind of mindset, she was able to see clearly and she was able to break records and go to her destination. So you must have a clear vision of where you want to be. Decide where you want to be. I'm happy with that young uh, youth who came and told us what she, he wants to be. Some of you here don't have any decision. Some of you are waiting for your parents to decide for you. You ask, what do you want to be? I don't know. You have to settle that in your mind. Decide where you want to go. Clearly define your goals. And then the next one is realize the God image in you. God created you not as a failure. You must have that divine nature. The nature of righteousness, the nature of holiness, the nature of impossibilities. You know, if the Bible says that you are created in the image of God, that's the image of righteousness. And, you know, with God, there's no impossibility. And if you have that image of God, it means nothing is impossible with you as a child of God. If you believe God, nothing is impossible. So have that mindset. And then you must also exercise faith in the word of God. Before you can conquer the mountain with your hand, you must first of all conquer the mountain in your heart. You must have faith. Just like Caleb. And that was why he was able to calm the people. He said, we are able to defeat this, you know, uh, this giant. They are just like bread to us. And when eventually they entered the promised land, he went to Joshua and said, Joshua, give me this mountain. I will dispossess the people who are there and I will possess that place as my own inheritance. That's a man of faith. So you must have faith for you to be able to push your limits. And then finally, you must be valiant. And valiance has to do with the quality of being brave and courageous. You know, God told Joshua, say, be courageous and be strong. If you want to possess this land, you must be a man of courage. There are challenges, there are obstacles, but what you need is what? Courage. Some people often think that success is just um, something that comes easy. It doesn't come easy, but you must make efforts. And with God, you will conquer in Jesus' name. I read about Edmund Hillary, who was the first man to climb to the top of Mount Everest. And those of you that studied geography, you know that that is the highest mountain, Mount Everest. And I read that on the 29th of May in 1953, that this man raised the flag, the English flag, on top of this mountain. It wasn't easy for him. He tried several times, and not just him. In fact, people died in the process of trying to climb Mount Everest. 
But after several attempts, this man was able to make it. And we are told that through sheer walls of ice, lack of oxygen, and chilling cold weather, he made it to the top of Everest, which is about 29,000 and 28 feet above the sea level. That is determination. So one other thing that will help you to succeed as a Christian youth is determination. Trials may come. Challenges may come. But make up your mind, I am going to make it. I remember when I was doing my first degree, it was not easy. But I had to push. And by God's grace, I was able to finish. And then I enrolled for my master's program. It was not easy. You know, financially, but God on my side, I was able to finish, and then I enrolled for my PhD. And finally, by the grace of God, I got to the top. Praise the Lord. I used to have an uncle, and um, I called him when I was doing my master's, and I said, please, I need your support. He told me, no, he doesn't have any, he can't help me, that his things are tough with him. And he wasn't here in Nigeria. And then, by the time he heard that I finished my PhD, he called me and said, you have killed a lion. You have killed a lion. And this was a person who was watching. You know, maybe he felt that, let's see how far he will go. Assuming I chickened out and I fell out of the way, he wouldn't have told me that. So don't allow anything to discourage you. Keep moving on. Keep pushing forward, and you'll make it in Jesus' name. Remember that you cannot walk on water until you step out of the boat. As long as you're in the comfort zone, you don't want to step out of the boat, you cannot walk on water. So step out of boat. Step out of that boat. Step out of that comfort zone, and then push your limits. Do not wait for a perfect time. Do not wait for a convenient time. As a Christian youth, now is the time. And by God's grace, you are going to make it. In Jesus' name. Tell yourself, I can. I will. I must. God bless you. Impact. You must say that like people who are made for extraordinary impacts. When I say impact, you will shout as loud as you can, made for extraordinary impacts. Impact. I know you can do it better than that. Now, can you... Stand on your feet. When I say impact, you will throw your fist in the air and say, made for extraordinary impact. Impact! Yes, we can do it better. Let's do it again. Impact! Can you tell your neighbor, I am made for extraordinary impact? Now tell another person, I am made for extraordinary impact. God will answer that prayer in your life in Jesus' name. Can we put our hands together for our excellency speaker now? Thank you very much. Please, you may be seated. Now, we are going to the panel session for the excellency. And I want to plead with you, if you have a question, if you have something bothering your mind, please make your way to the front and you'll be given an opportunity to ask the question. You have a question, you have something you want to ask, you have something that is not very clear to you. Please make your way to the front and you'll be given an opportunity to ask your question.
And to help us today answer our questions, to help us today clear our doubts, will be seasoned professionals, people who have made an impact in their worlds. And we've already had the citation of the excellential speaker. So we'll be inviting to take a seat now the excellential speaker, Professor Edward Ezedike. Let's put our hands together for him as he comes up now. Please, I want you to clap. I want you to clap. The second person we will be inviting to join the discussion this afternoon will be one of our own, Dr. Bubraye Uko. Let's put our hands together for her, please. Please clap, please clap. Put your hands together. The next person that will be joining this discussion today is Dr. Dominic Isaac. Let's put our hands together, please. And the final person that will be joining the session today is Professor Taiwo Ademilui. So very quickly, we'll give you the citation of everybody on the panel today. Dr. Buboraye Uko, you may stand, please. Dr. Buboraye Uko is a lecturer in the Department of Pharmacology, Faculty of Basic Medical and Basic Clinical Sciences at Pamo University of Medical Sciences, Port Harcourt. She graduated from the University of Port Harcourt with a BSc in, phys in, in Physiology in 1998. She went on to further to obtain an MSc degree in Pharmacology and Toxicology. Dr. Buboye Uko has a PhD in molecular and clinical cancer medicine from the University of Liverpool in United Kingdom. Her specialty includes general and systems pharmacology, cancer chemotherapy, and cancer epigenetics. She is a member of systems pharmacology and a member of the Cancer Epigenetics Society Austria the West African Society of Pharmacology, and a peer reviewer for JMIR publications in Canada. She has participated in academic conferences in Nigeria, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. She is married with children and an associate uh, um, pastor with the DLCF. Please have your seat, ma'am. The next person will be Professor Taiwo Ademiluyi. Professor Taiwo is a professor of chemical engineering at River State University. She graduated with a first class in chemical engineering from University of Lagos. She has an MTech and a PhD from River State University of Technology. She has supervised numerous undergraduate and postgraduate and PhD research works and has published in over 50 journals and conference papers. She's a member of the Council for the Regulation of Engineering in Nigeria, and she's served as the acting head of the department at the Kwaibom State University. She has held several leadership roles. She's an active member of multiple university committees. Uh, Professor Ademilui is married to Mr. Adem Ademola and is blessed with two sons and one daughter. Thank you very much, ma'am. Please, can we put our hands together for Jesus? Put your hands together for Jesus. 
Finally, we have Dr. Dominic Isaac. He obtained his master's in international finance and accounting from Liverpool University in United Kingdom. He bagged his PhD in management with specialization in, in finance from Walden University in the United States of America. Dr. Dominic Isaac has a sterling and a towering profile. Uh, he is currently the state youth coordinator of the DLSO and he is married with two children, John and Grace. Thank you very much, sir. You may have your seats. Now, when I say impact, you will tell me made for extraordinary impacts. Are we ready? Let me hear you. Are you ready? Impact! You will be made for extraordinary impact in Jesus' name. All right, we'll take the questions now. I'll take the first brother by my left there. Okay. Uh, good, good morning, sir. Thank you for this opportunity. Good morning, church. I, um, I want to ask, I have two questions. What happens when, um, uh, um, when you're, because when your enthusiasm, when your zeal fails, um, how do you reignite it? Because when you have several passions and you don't seem to, and, and you don't seem to, um, um, for those interests, for those interests, for those interests, you, if, you don't, if you don't have, um, how do you reignite your passion? And secondly, I want to ask, um, what's the difference between, because even the Bible says your young men shall see visions and your old men will dream dreams. So I want a clear distinction. Why, um, how, to, because without vision, you can't see into the future like our All right. uh, speaker said. So thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Dr. Isaac will take that for us. Yes, let's have the, the lady in green school uniform over there. The sister in, yes, with, with a beret, yes, yes, you. Can we give her the, can we, can we give her the microphone, please? Yes, please go ahead and ask your question. My name is Princess. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to ask my question. Um, I have two questions. It has been bothering me for a long time about why we... I saw in a place in the Bible, is it Matthew 7 verse 1, if I'm not mistaken, about the Bible says, judge not that thou be not judged. So when one wants to be a lawyer, I know that one must judge like a magistrate, a judge, one must judge. Is this actually a sin that you are judging other people as a lawyer? And then number two, in deeper life, it is a crime for one... As, sorry, it is a sin for one to put on trousers. And then as a policewoman, when you grow up and then you're a, when you want to go on missions, you don't have to put on skirt, you have to put on trousers. It's actually a sin for one to wear that trousers up for the mission. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dr. Bubo Uko, you'll take that for us. Yes, let's take the brother in the striped blue tie. Yes, please, your question and straight to the point. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My name is Ugoji Timothy from Umeble region. Um, Professor SDK, during the course of his excellential, he said that when the Bible says you can do all things, it literally means all things. And then during the workshop earlier today, um, our teacher was giving us a framework of setting goals. And the A in that framework was for achievable. And the long and short of what he said in achievable is that there are some goals that you cannot achieve, or there are some goals that, that, that you cannot achieve. In essence, that's what he said. So how do you reconcile the idea of you being able to do anything, all things, as Paul said, you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you, and reconcile that some all right. goals cannot be achieved. Thank you so much. Professor SDK will help us with that. Now let's take the final question from 
a sister. There's um, a sister in the red jacket over there. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma. My question is, in a situation where there is no resource for you or resources for you to push your limits, how do you cope? That's my question. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Taiwo will take that for us. Now, we're going to have the first um, set of responses, and then we'll go for another round of questions. Yes. A goal, have a vision that is bigger than your challenges, your obstacles, and your barriers. How do I do that? If you want to be a business tycoon, a lecturer, somebody of high standing in the society, begin to write it down. Begin to expand it. Begin to see yourself there. If, for example, you are in a community where people use bicycles, but you want to be a pilot to fly an aeroplane, that's your vision, that's your passion. And every day you wake up, you are imagining yourself flying above your community, above your village. All the gossip, and all the insults and abuse of your village people will be lower than the sky, and it will not enter your skin. Number two, we are made to be people of vision. That's your second question. Our young men shall dream dreams and our old men, and we shall have visions. How do you have a vision? Vision comes from studying. Look at the word of God. For example, heaven. Have you gone to check the building of the New Jerusalem? No matter what we teach as lecturers in the university, no lecturer, no matter their level, can design anything close to that of heaven. And when you begin to imagine it in your heart, all these buildings in this Ahoda will lose their attraction in your heart. The same way, whatever you are pursuing in life, you meditate on it, you pray about it, you study about on it, and you put all your effort, distractions will lose their strength. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. A round of applause, please. Now, very quickly, we'll take the second um, answer to the second question. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I want to answer the second question that says, judge not so that we are also not judged. Um, first of all, I want to debunk the saying, which I know is prevalent in these days, where everybody says, don't judge me, you're judging me. That's what's prevalent. So first of all, even you can judge yourself when you're doing what is right or what is wrong. That's the first thing. So people have the right, based on scriptures, to tell you if you're doing something wrong or you're doing something right. That's first of all. So that you don't say for every person who comes to you and say, oh, why are you doing this? Or you shouldn't be doing this. And you say, you're judging me. I want us to be able to take that into um, consideration. And then secondly, you're talking about the judges. These people have been placed by legally to be able to maintain law and order in the society. Let's take, for example, somebody like King Solomon that had an opportunity to judge a case of two women. He actually made a decision. Praise the Lord. So the judges have the right because they've been legally mandated, they've been trained so that they can maintain law and order. But in this case, they need a lot of wisdom so that people are not wrongly convicted. Praise the Lord. Secondly, 
you talked about trousers. From the scriptures, because we are Christians, the standpoint of our dressing for women is that we should dress for holiness and godliness. When God told um, Aaron to make garments for his people, but I know that there are a lot of changes that have gone on in the world. We're seeing uh, Christians who are wearing trousers, and there's a lot of confusion. You're seeing people who are highly anointed, so to speak, ministering on social media. Some of you are their followers. Some of you are listening to them. But the word of God remains the same, that we should be, um, keep away from trousers as women. For professionals that are doing rigorous activities on the forefront of maybe war or some kind of things, you may be allowed to put on those things if you, because exposing yourself also is not for holiness and godliness. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now let's have the third response to the question from one of our uh, students here, Professor Ezedike. Thank you so much. Um, the question concerning whether we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. It still remains the word of God. And we cannot um, doubt what the Bible says. All you need to understand is that every scripture has a context. And you should not lift it out of that context. For instance, you have a nature as a human being. You cannot act like Maybe a bird, you can't fly because it's not your nature. You can't fly, it's not your nature. So, in that case, whatever the Bible says should be seen from the context of an individual existing as a human being. You cannot climb up now and then you want to jump from a three story building, five story building, and say, I can do all things. No. You must put it within the right context. Now, as a student, we are talking about success. We are talking about pushing your limits to academic success. You want to make it in life. You want to grow as in a spiritual life. Those are the areas we should be looking at, not areas that are against your nature as a human being. Do you get the point? Uh -huh. You, as a human being, there are some things you're supposed to eat that will nourish your body. You go and eat what animals are supposed to eat and say, I can do all things. You are not following the scripture. So you must put it within the right context. And once you put it within the right context, by the grace of God, you will make it. That is what Paul is saying. You can do all things. As long as those things are in accordance with the will of God, they're in line with the promises of God for your life, you can do all things. Thank you so much, sir. Can we put our hands together for Jesus? Let's have the final response now from Professor Taiwo. And you find out that that gift, every good thing, every good gift comes from above. And when you have a relationship with God, the Lord begins to shine out those gifts out of you. Like our Father in the Lord said yesterday, that everyone will be looking at you and say, this product is for me. There's nobody that will not like a good thing. I remember when I was in secondary school, our Lagos State government brought out write, uh, you know, a writing competition. And I went into that competition. I was third in the state. And we were giving money for that competition, in that competition. And so you find out that when you display your uh, talent, your gift, people are attracted to it and they want to pay for it. There's a lot of scholarship, even when you get into the university. A lot of company, Ajib, Shell, um, uh, Elf, uh, so many companies offer scholarship yearly to students. Even the university pays school fee for students who are exceptional. And so you have a part to play to make sure that you uh, are diligent and able to put up, you know, the best of yourself so that you can be marketable. People are looking for uh, people to train and sponsor. 
And so it's very important that you have to put your, you know, you play your part by making sure that you are very committed to your studies, you are doing everything you can to be the best in your class. And as you are doing that, opportunities will be coming and you'll be applying for it. Another thing is this, no mother or father, you know, will see a student diligent, committed, first class brain, and this student is also well behaved. The mother will do anything. If it's to borrow money, they will do it. If it's to sell their land, they will do it. And say, look at this, my child. I remember when I was in secondary school. When we have a prize giving day, before I would go and sit down, they would call my name. Before I would go and sit down, they would call my name. My father was a Muslim. But because I was very diligent in my studies, he was not persecuting me again. He said, look, that deeper life continue to go there because I can see what is doing out of you. And so you have all the opportunities you can get when you are diligent. People are looking for people like you. And uh, resources, money should not be a barrier. Just be saved, be born again. Let God bring out that, you know, excellence out of you and all that you need will be made available to you. I have a lot of testimonies of our students who have scholarships who are outside Nigeria. Their parents don't have anything. But because they stayed with the Lord, they served God, today they are shining outside Nigeria. And you too can shine. Just serve the Lord. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Can we put our hands together for all our panelists? Now, for those of us that have questions, please... Um, let's see our leaders after now, and they'll be able to counsel you and answer your questions. Can we put our hands together for our panelists, please? And those that have questions online, uh, we apologize. We are not able to take the questions at this time. Impact! That's too cold. Impact! Now, I want to inform you that we have in our midst the executive governor of River States, ably represented by the head of service, River States, Sir George Weke. Can you put your hands together, please? And he will be coming up now to give us a charge straight from the governor himself. You're welcome, sir. A round of applause for him, please. Impact. Impact. I'm sorry, I don't know how to conclude it. Good morning. The House of Clergy here present, our respected mothers, other very distinguished men of God and personalities here present, our very distinguished and God fearing youths, both for River State and those from our side. Good morning. My name is George Chimezienweke. I am the current head of service of River State. But I am here this morning to represent His Excellency, Sir Simnalai Fubara a grand service star of River State who would have sincerely loved to be here. He sincerely loved to be here. But due to the demands of his office, he's unavoidably absent. And I am here I want to beg you to forgive every inadequacies that may come out of this, but to stand before you 
to speak to our children, our youths, the real owners of this society in the next five, ten years. In fact, even as we stand now, anyone of my age that has not made any mark may not bring any more honor to Nigeria. We are looking up to you to rewrite or to put Nigeria in the right perspectives that we want our nation to be addressed. So once more, I say good morning. This morning, I have a very small speech or charge which I have captioned, igniting the flame of excellence. Igniting the flame of excellence, a charge to River State Youths. But before I start, I want to say that as I was leading to the lectures, it's not just for you alone. Yes, it is for you, but I, sitting here, I benefited, and I know I will still sit and benefit more from speakers. I couldn't hold on to protocol. I had to tell one of the presenters that from the beginning to the end, even if we have spent about an hour, it's like five minutes in my eyes because everything is so perfect and very nourishing to both our souls, our mental capabilities, and everything that makes us human beings. <laughs> impact! <laughs> How will someone not make impact if he's found in this type of environment? Count yourself lucky that you were shown this way. The Bible says, Joshua told them, the people of Israel, to choose this day whom they will serve. Uh, for him and his family, he will serve the living God. I want to thank your parents who had made that decision to serve a living God. And you found yourself born into such families. Please, it is not an accident. It is a deliberate attempt by God himself to make you someone of impact in life. And I want to welcome you to the world of impact. There is this man called Eleanor Roosevelt. He says, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. I don't know the dream you have. I don't know the dream you have, but the good news is that the future belongs to you. I want to stand here to tell you as a person that there is nothing the money of your parents can do for you. There is nothing the money of your parents can do for you. There is nothing government can do for you if you do not on your own stand out and say, I must succeed. But then, still as a preamble, I listened to some of the answers given. A young person asked a question here. What happens when we don't have the resources, but you are trying to push, but you don't have what it takes, financial muscle to push? Well, an answer was given, but I want to add. The addition I want to give here is that, yes, we can't just take the scriptures only. When Jesus was moving around, he was doing good. When he met people that had different issues, he addressed their issues from the root cause. There was this woman who had a problem, her only son. She was a widow. The husband had died. And I understand that their culture is like what we have in my part of the world, the Hebrew culture and everything. If you don't have a son, no inheritance for you. So for that woman, all hope was lost. When Jesus saw this woman, he did not just say, yeah. Jesus went to the root of her problem, raised up her son, and gave her hope back. I think that we, as a church, owe such people that duty. We don't have to look at only Shell and all of them. The church, the elders, people in standing in society should watch out for people that you see that they are struggling. They've done their own best, but they're not able to get what they have or they need. We should intervene at such times. We should not allow such brilliant people to say, God will do it for you. God will do it through human beings. God has provided us. For seeing it, we have been positioned to do that. And for not doing it, we have lost something. I want to say that the government of River State is poised to do something. 
when I read a written speech. As I stand before you today, representing His Excellency at this Impact Academy, I want to thank Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumi for putting together this type of program. This program is actually a life-changing program for Nigeria. The youth are the backbone of our society, and it is our collective responsibility to empower, educate, and inspire them to become active participants in shaping the future of River State and Nigeria in general. The Impact Academy has provided a platform for spiritual growth, moral rejuvenation, and intellectual empowerment. I sincerely commend our Father and the Lord, Dr. W.F. Kumiye, for this unwavering commitment to the development of our youth and indeed the human race. As Governor of River State, he recognizes the critical role that our youth play in driving progress, innovation, and transformation. This administration remains dedicated to creating an enabling environment that fosters growth, creativity, and excellence. I was given a paper and I saw the areas I should cover. Forgive me that I just had to touch each of the sessions one by one. And I take the first item, embracing good morale and good education. The certificate you are given, you may have a first class, but you may not be the person we want in society. Many of the kidnappers have intelligence, but they use it negatively. Please, you need God, first of all. Even if you don't know book, you just need God. You just need God. That is the first, the only thing, if I have to recommend only one thing, just embrace God. We are asked, we are to respect our parents in everything. It should not be when what they are saying contravenes when the, what the word of God is saying. It must not be. Whatever goes against the word of God, every child of God must, as a matter of fact, reject that type of advice. So I say, the first thing is that you must embrace good moral and good education. My dear young leaders, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Nelson Mandela said this. Good morals and quality education are the foundation upon which we can build a future. This administration of His Excellency prioritizes education, equipping with skills and knowledge the complete, to compete in an increasing globalized world. Two minutes is too small for me. I will send this paper to the, to the uh, church. So what, when they finish, they will know what to do. Martin Luther King Jr. also said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. The Bible also says that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. In River State, we have witnessed firsthand devastating consequences of courtism and violence. This administration has taken both steps to eradicate courtism. I want to charge you to avoid courtism. Avoid anything that looks like violence. And to the minders of these children in school, please teach them with love. Teach them with love and tell them that one can still be a great person without violence. We are told to engage in profitable ventures and skills acquisition. The best way to predict the future is to recreate it. Whatever you think that you deserve to have in life, go and read the history of people who have become that and follow their steps. With the word of God by your side, you will actually progress even beyond any person that you see as a model today. Take advantage of what you are doing here. It looks like, you know, you are blessed to be here. So I want us to take all the teachings that have been done by the Impact Academy. And in fact, in all the churches, in all your churches, whenever you have privilege to be given this type of training, 
I love as I see you sitting down. Write it down. I saw some of you with notes. Others are not with notebooks. Always note what is coming out and make it aware of life. It will carry you very far. Second Timothy 3, 16 to 17 reminds us, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Not only man of God, children of God now. Every word that's given to you, to you here today is for your growth. I know that in the next five, ten years, you will remember these lectures and they will make more meaning to you. I pray that you will not joke with these lectures. Well, let me rush. I'll be giving maybe it's only one minute, many, but please permit me to talk to the children of River State. It's a very rare opportunity to have this quality of children. The governor does not believe in violence. The governor has said that it is not the way to go that violent people should be encouraged. We believe in what God can do, and that is why the governor has asked me to stand there to talk to you that where you are is where you should be. And I want you to take everything about the teachings of Christ as what, the only thing you may need to grow in life. Every other thing can be amended, but if you don't have the word of God, you don't have a foundation. Whatever you put on nothing will fall into oblivion. In summary, today, as we gather here, I give you the following advice. Embrace good morals and education, shun cultism and violence, Engage in profitable ventures. Receive godly teachings from, the, from your pastors and from our Father and the Lord, W.F. Kubiye. River State is committed towards youth development. The pillars will empower you, these pillars will empower you to become active participants in shaping the future of River State Nigeria. My dear young leaders, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hidden. Matthew 5.14. As you embark on this journey, remember that your potential is, potential is limitless. You have the power to create positive change, drive innovation, and drive and inspire others. The, greatness, the greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising after every fall. River State needs your energy, your creativity, and passion. Nigeria needs your leadership, innovation, and entrepreneurship. I charge you to take ownership of your development. Seize the opportunities provided by this administration. Become active participants in your local church, in your families. Create a change. Start a new type of life. Remember that your potential is limitless. This is my advice for you. Believe in yourself and your abilities. Take risks and innovate. Learn from failures and setbacks. Let your failures not destroy you. Learn from them. Build strong networks. Prioritize your mental and fiscal health. God bless you. You are the leaders of tomorrow. Thank you. When it came, don't worry. Right. In part, this is not the voice of our global young people who the River State Governor with his re representative have just spoken to. I want the boys to tell me to respond. Impact! I know the girls will do better than the boys. The girls, are you ready? Impact! With extraordinary impact, we need everyone together. So I'm going to Call it for the last time, and I want a joint response from everyone. Impact! Made for extraordinary impact! Praise the Lord! We have a special guest in our midst today, right from the United States of America. Can you jam your hands for Jesus? It is my special honor and a privilege to welcome to the stage John Wilk. He is a former United States Army veteran. He's a Marine Corps. 
He actually gave his life to Christ when he was serving in the U.S. Army. Right now, he's a journalist, he's a radio news um, announcer, he's a producer, he's a public affairs guy. And today, I want to tell you, he has traveled to over, over 44 countries, and this is the first time in Nigeria. Nigerian, welcome. He will be speaking shortly on everyday choices, extraordinary outcome. Welcome, John. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Daniel. Thank you, Pastor Daniel. Good morning, Nigeria. <laughs> Greetings from the United States of America. I am so blessed to be here today. The beauty of Nigeria is in the faith of its people. I have never been to a country with such incredibly strong faith. And I'm proud to be on the stage uh, with the convener and general secretary, uh, Pastor Dr. William Kamui, and I am so grateful to have a chance to share with you today about Everyday Choices, Extraordinary Outcomes. They've asked me to share just a few moments of some choices that you could make in your day as a youth that could make an extraordinary impact. So first of all, you are not going to make an extraordinary, extraordinary impact in your friends, neighbors, community, nation, and world without an extraordinary savior. The most important decision, the most important choice that you can make that will impact and make extraordinary outcomes is to put your the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And that is what he says is the most important decision that you can make in your life. The second choice that you can make is to love your neighbor as yourself. The first one, loving the Lord, is very easy. In fact, he's so good and gracious and wonderful and loving and merciful. Uh, he, is the, he is the easier one that loving your neighbor is the more difficult of the two. But through your faith and trust in following the word of God, you can love your neighbor as yourself. These two choices should guide every other decision in your life. Uh, let's talk a little bit about understanding the power of your choices. Deuteronomy says, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. God presents us with choices every day in our life. And our daily decisions, no matter how big or how small, they build up. If it's managing our resources, if it's managing our time, how we treat others, all of these are opportunities to choose life and blessing. These everyday decisions, while maybe small, they can lead to bigger outcomes. You know, one of the verses of scripture in Luke says, whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. In this uh, part of scripture, Jesus is explaining that faithfulness and fidelity to small things leads to trust in our larger matters. So each small choice we make, even today, even for the younger ones, even for the young professionals, each small choice you made builds a habit which builds your character. And that shapes the trajectory of your lives and the ability to impact and have extraordinary impact on others. Uh, one big major choice you can make in your life is to choose your friends wisely. In America, one of the sayings is, you are the average of the five people that you hang out with, that you surround yourself with. One of those five people in your life should be the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. The other four people in your life need to be people who speak life into you, speak blessing into you. They challenge you to rise up, live for the Lord, and, and call you up to something more. If you surround yourself with, with people of low character, poor choices, poor habits, you will begin to take on their poor character and their poor, their poor habits. Whereas if you take on friends and you uh, become friends with people of high character and, and, and good habits, you will begin to take on high character and good habits. Another thing that we can choose every day is that we could choose our words wisely. Scripture in Proverbs tells us, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. This scripture is saying to you, your tongue is a powerful proclamation to other people. If you speak life or blessing or death and curse into life. 
So use your tongue to speak encouragement and kindness and love and grace to your neighbor. Our words have those power, has this tremendous power to tear, up, to tear down or to build up. And then one, one more uh, choice is that you can make in your daily life that has extraordinary impact is the choice to forgive. Forgiveness is an incredible gift from the Lord through grace. And we are called to emulate, to follow, to be like Christ, to be holy like Christ. And one of the things that we can do is to forgive others when they sin against us. Instead of holding a grudge, instead of working for revenge, and sort of trying to get back to someone, we are told, we are commanded in scripture to forgive. And this is the life of a Christian, a daily life of forgiveness. A brother wrongs you, even if they don't come to forgiveness. Your father wrongs you, your mother wrongs you, your, your, your neighbor wrongs you. Living a life of forgiveness is living a life of holiness. And so I wanted to challenge you with these daily, these daily choices, everyday choices for extraordinary outcomes. So thank you for your time, and we're so blessed to be here. Uh, my boss just arrived from the United States. He will be speaking uh, later this uh, conference, uh, I believe at the minister's time, and so we are looking forward to getting to know you, to getting to know the pastors the, and the staff. And thank you very much, and God bless Nigeria. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? We'll go quickly to the second variety session now. And we'll be having a panel discussion. The panel discussion will be looking at digital literacy, digital skills, and how you can leverage them in the 21st century. Can we have the panel discussants now? Today we've learned that we should not rest until our good becomes better and our better becomes best. We've also learned that what you need to get to the top is clear vision. We've also learned that you are the average of the people you surround yourself with. And one of the people you should surround yourself with is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the other four are people that speak life, health, and success into you. So please choose your friends wisely. We'll have the panel discussion now. everyone and welcome to today's panel discussion. The topic we'll be considering today is leveraging opportunities of the digital age with emphasis on digital literacy, artificial intelligence, and data protection. I will be the moderator for this panel and I am Dr. Rita Ajirenike, a practicing medical doctor in tech and a data entry expert. With me on this panel, to my far left, we have Engineer Daniel O'Neill, Research Engineer, MTN Nigeria, South, South, and Southeast Region. Agam Solomon Asukwo, an academic technologist in the University of Port Harcourt, and also an AI enthusiast. Bainas Gapis Fegalo, a computer scientist and a content creator. Okay, I'm Engineer Chiso. Um, the managing consultant of Summit Integrated Services, we are digital product developers and marketers. Thank you so much. Several decades ago, 
If you just knew how to read and write, you are fine, but things are changing. And you need at least a bit of uh, digital literacy to be relevant. So let's go straight to our questions. Peace, can you tell us what is digital literacy? Thank you very much. Digital literacy is basically the ability to use effectively and responsibly our digital platforms, technologies like WhatsApp, Facebook, Microsoft Office packages, even ChatGPT, amongst many others. Thank you. What skills, what are the relevant skills one should possess before you are tagged a digital literate? Okay. So me, I'll use my personal skill as an example. I'm a content creator. So the first skill I had to possess was the technical skill. I had to learn what the social media platforms are, how they work, what is needed of me. Am I creating content for myself or for brands, volunteering? I had to go ahead to learn information from online, find inspiration from online, and being able to sort them out, evaluate which one I can use as a Christian. I had to collaborate and communicate with other content creators, build a community for myself. I also had to learn my own citizenship online. All right, thank you so much. You know, as young minds, we are very creative. So how is creativity expressed in the digital space? Okay, so basically, a digital literate can be creative in various aspects. So we have graphic designers, video editors, data science, cloud computing. You can mention them, there are so many. Thank you so much. So this takes me to Engineer Chisum. You are a product, digital product developer. I'm just curious, how did you learn these skills? Are there platforms where we can go to learn these skills? Thank you very much, Dr. Rita. See, I started at a very pure novice, so like any other person who just starts from ground zero. So during my secondary school days, I was hungry for knowledge, of course. I would use my savings to go to the cyber cafe to learn the basic digital literacy skills. Then going over to the university too, I learned some of the digital skills, which um, um, I'm an expert in today. And let me just tell you, the YouTube is like my own university. I learned a lot from YouTube. And peer-to-peer um, -peer learning is very important. In the university, I got some like-minded people, and we put our heads together, took on some taxing projects, and we honed our skills. Now, Thank some of the places... So much. YouTube, peer-to-peer um, -peer learning. Are there other platforms available? Yes. We have Udemy. We have Google Skills for Africa. It's free, some of them. We have the federal government has this 3MTT. The NITDA, um, that's uh, NITDA in Nigeria, has some pro programs for people to learn digital skills. We have w3schools.com. A lot of them, please search for them. Thank you so much. The UN, United Nations, has estimated that by 2030, over 90% of available jobs will be linked to digital technology. What are your thoughts on this? And are there career prospects in this field? Look, there are a lot of career prospects. With skills, with digital skills, you will never join the bandwagon of the unemployed. I've never been in the job hunting spree in my life because of the digital skills I have. I've moved even as a young chap, I was a consultant to top organizations like even the UNICEF. Currently, I'm in a consultancy team with a fully World Bank funded project which is digitalizing digital, uh, providing solutions for digital education in the globe. Our digital products are used globally. So these are things that you can benefit from, starting from a pure novice, you can get to the top through digital skills. Amazing, amazing. So going over to, to artificial. artificial intelligence, Solomon, a lot is going on about AI. Can you tell us what is artificial intelligence and how can AI aid in digital education. All right, thank you, Dr. Rita. And I believe that every one of us here that are using smartphone, we are very much familiar with AI and um, in our WhatsApp, on Facebook, and of course, the Google Gemini. Now, before you use this technology, first and foremost, you must understand what is artificial intelligence. Now, artificial intelligence is basically um, a computer system that is being trained on a large data set, what we call corpus of data, in order for that machine to think reason, and of course, like human, so that you have you. To human capacity. Thank you. Recently, I saw an article, and one of the paragraphs was like a copy and paste from ChatGPT. As an AI expert and someone in the, into the academics, what are the pitfalls to be avoided by our scholars while using AI, especially ChatGPT? Thank you. Now, what we must know as AI user is that AI is divided into two, 
There are, we have weak or narrow AI, and also we have the super AI. Now, current AI that we're actually using here, it is this, the weak AI, which is being trained on a particular aspect, meaning that there could be limitation in the use of AI. Now, what we must understand is this, that the AI cannot replace human. Rather, those who don't have skill on how to use AI will be replaced. Now, what that means is that there are some biases in the use of AI, which can actually affect the result that you have. So before you get any result, you have to filter, refine it, and also check if the result corresponds to the true um, aspect of the work that you want to get. Wonderful get. insights there. Thank you so much. Now, we need internet. We need data to assess this learning. I come to Oni as a telecom expert. We have challenge of affordability. What, how can we navigate these challenges? Uh, thank you very much. Um, most of the time, this has always been the challenge that everyone has. How can I get access to an affordable internet? Yeah, by uh, the Nigerian Communication uh, Statistics, uh, we have almost like a 45.5% broadband penetration already in Nigeria, which shows that um, data penetration and internet penetration in Nigeria is really growing. Uh, so for us as youth, uh, there are different affordable data plans, data bundles that can be harnessed for us to learn all of these digital skills. All you just need to do is to check and Google data plans like daily data plans, weekly data plans that are within a student's budget that you can use to harness and learn all of the skills. And most especially, my wife currently did something of recent. Uh, she subscribed to a a, a data plan that gives her a YouTube uh, night plan. And I would just say that at night, she started learning content writing, ghost writing. Wow. And with that uh, access, she was able to hone her skill in content writing and ghost uh, writing. So there are Amazing. YouTube night plans Amazing. for this, um, uh, all of, from all of our telcos that you can harness and use to learn all of this skill. Why wasting your time just uh, chatting Thank and uh, so running much. around Thank on the internet when you have Thank that? Thank you so much. Why running around on the internet? There are online scams and frauds. How can we protect our data? Okay, just suddenly you receive the call as a Deeper Life member, you receive the call on a Thursday that you are having an online prayer meeting. Is that not going to be a shocking thing to you? You just left church and somebody just suddenly called you on WhatsApp that you have a night VG. That's because they wanted to hack into your WhatsApp. So the next thing you hear, you will receive a code, right? Everybody here? Yes, you will receive a code and you want to put that code. I, am, I would advise and caution you not to. So just to put some, a little bit of housekeeping around your data protection, number one, be cautious of the links that you access. All of this, uh, click this link and you are going to receive 15 gig data. Uh, you have to be very careful. Be careful of providing your personal information online, especially to unverified websites. Also ensure that you do a two-factor authentication on all your devices and your accounts, and ensure to use strong passwords. What I mean by strong password is you mixing uh, letters, characters with as uh, uh, uppercase, lowercase, mixing them with special characters. And with that, you are going to be able to at least have Thank some so uh, housekeeping. Uh, Thank you so much. It's been an Thank amazing you. time here. Before we go, your final thoughts. Peace. So I'll just say this to every youth out here. The digital spaces does not limit you because of your age or your class. Go out there, find something you love to do, get a niche, and stay relevant. Thank you. Engineer Chisholm. I want to say the internet has created a lot of opportunities for we as young ones, and there is no longer so much entry barriers into this space. Now, success is better when opportunities meet preparedness. Thank you. Solomon? This is the era of AI, and uh, many persons use it and without knowing the, fu the, the fundamentals of artificial intelligence. And I want you to look out for what we call hallucination, a tendency where the AI system gives you confidently wrong results. So watch out and make sure you know the limitations and the bias associated with the use of artificial intelligence. So need final you. thoughts. Okay, so from me, I would say for every youth that is here, partner with God. And on the second note, I want to tell you that a man with vision will be watched by a man with television. Therefore, be the first to go to market youth. Thank you. There are diverse opportunities, but you must strategically position yourself to stand out and remain relevant. Learn, unlearn, and relearn.
thank you so much. So on this note, I will thank the panelists and the audience. You've been an amazing audience. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Can we put our hands together for our panelists? A man with vision will be watched by the man with what? Let's say it again. A man with vision will be watched by the man that has what? So be the man with vision. Tell your neighbor, be the man with vision. Yes, we'll have the second presentation now. Uh, a spoken word presentation from Ruth. We have a spoken word presentation on the twists of destiny by Ruth Tanu. and I'm going to be rendering a spoken word piece titled Swiss of Destiny. And so as you listen, may remember bless in Jesus' name. When destiny knocked and disappointment of life weakened my heart, I had no hope, no hope for the future. This interest that to be threatened by those who have shaped my happiness constantly my past crushed beneath the hill an innocent victim of an unjust course and a courageous pioneer of a new life i accept reality in crude ugliness some weak mind say to me slough off this suffit of dreamy sentimentality and driven to the limits of my resistance i accept what Extraordinary impact. And if you believe that, you are also made for extra. 
to our ordinary impact. Thank you. That was a wonderful one. I am made for extraordinary impacts. If you believe that, can you shout amen? amen? No, you're not saying amen like people that believe it. If you believe you are made for extraordinary impact, jump on your feet and shout amen. amen! Some people are not standing. I said, if you believe you are made for extraordinary impact, jump on your feet and shout amen! amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. We'll have the final presentation from the Unique Ladies Brass Band. Made for extraordinary impact. impact. We are the unique ladies. Unique sound. And we are here to give you wonderful melodies that will bless your heart. Melodies titled Ebu Beidike and the Rise. Listen and be blessed.
That was a wonderful rendition from the Unique Ladies Brass Band. Can you put your hands together for Jesus? Put your hands together for Jesus. Now we'll have the choir. While the choir is... While the choir is coming up, I want to recognize... Everyone that came to this wonderful program today, I want you to put your hands on your chest and tell yourself, I am made for extraordinary impacts. If you are sure, can you, can you look at somebody beside you and tell the person, I am made for extraordinary impacts. The Lord will make that possible and a reality in your life in Jesus' name. I know who you are. The cross of salvation was only the 
this task. Now I am favored, free and forgiven. I have a future, and it's what's the leaving. Salvation was only the start. Now I am Jesus. Free and forgiven. Oh, 